Hey, Nick Hawks with Gristle King here, going through a Bobber 500 setup and a little bit of a surprise on top. So the Bobber 500 is actually in this outdoor enclosure. The guts of the 5G miner are in there, but the actual radio is down below, about two floors down in the front office here, providing coverage to the street and the office. The other thing that is inside here is the lower miner, which is why I put this up here. Now you could do this another way. You could keep the Bobber 500 inside, which is what Bobcat recommends, but I ran a short cable, which is what I like to do, from the LoRa and the, the 5G side, or 5G kind of guts here, just up to the little H antenna at the top. I wanted a short run. I like those short runs. I like to maintain all of the gain that I can totally get into that antenna. But you could do it with LMR 600, LMR 400 with a 30 or 40 foot run, which is what it would take to get you down to where the router is and, and get the bobber inside. So two different ways of doing it. It's probably, I don't know, $40 cheaper to do it this way. It's surprising it that's, as that sounds, but that's what uh, LMR 400 costs and that's what these little uh, cheap enclosures cost. So maybe it's the same by the time you're done with all the hardware, but uh, yeah, this is how I did it. The important point here was just to get the thing deployed and show you what it looks like. It's nothing fancy. You can totally do this. If you've set up a Helium hotspot before, you can do the same thing here. You're just running one more Ethernet cable. So there's PoE that comes in here. You actually aren't, it's not recommended to do PoE for these uh, minor setups, but that's what I did. I wanted to see how it worked. Um, the stated draw is 60 watts. That's actually not correct. If you measure it, it's only about 20. So you can use a normal injector and splitter. Um, I didn't know that. I used the full-on heavy, heavy-duty $200 splitter, but you don't need it. So that powers the, the kind of guts of the 5G in the lower side. And then there is another Ethernet cable going out and down the side of the building to the first floor where the actual 5G radio is. That doesn't need power over Ethernet. You can use that, but I've got that plugged into an outlet down there. And that's the setup. So out of the router, Ethernet up here, PoE into this thing, powering the LoRa and the 5G guts. And then out of the ethernet for the data side and then down to the 5g radio that is in the office super easy the other thing direct your attention to the top is the new antenna on there that is unlike all the uh, helium antennas you've seen that's running at about 1500 megahertz and it is a satellite antenna it's for a totally different project called geodnet and geodnet is a way to make gps signals more accurate uh, in very brief terms all the satellites flying around the sky are basically flying clocks, emitting signals. They're flying along known paths. And so their signals that they emit traveling at the speed of light should take a certain amount of time to get to any given point. Now that time can be delayed if they go through atmospheric disturbances or solar flares or space weather, or they bounce off a building. And so this thing acts as a reference station for all of the moving parts around here to know how long a signal should take to get to this area here in San Diego in this case. Um, these are a little bit different than helium miners in that you only want one every 20 kilometers. It's a brand new project, so we're gonna see how they handle the overcrowding that we've seen in helium. But pretty interesting to have another blockchain and meat space project for us citizen technologists to deploy. All right, that's what I got. Bobber 500, Geodnet, links in the description. Rock and roll.